when it comes to zebra plecos, it's probably a better idea to buy a captive fish in terms of ethical reasons as well, but also for your enjoyment because you're going to get a better experience with your fish. Uh, they're going to be more better adapted to captive life and also they're going to be more easier for you to feed and take care of because you're going to know exactly what type of food they're fed in most cases if you are buying from somebody local. But they're going to be more adapted to your water and they're also going to be more adapted to you poking around and looking in there with a flashlight when they do actually eventually spawn for you so that they're not going to be terrified and break the eggs or eat the eggs or anything like that or kick them out or some other you know mishap that could happen and could go wrong. Produced by Mali. I was actually sitting exactly where you guys were sitting and I came to a revelation. I like to sit here and look at my fish. I don't know why you guys keep fish. I'm pretty sure most of you guys want to enjoy your fish and that's why you keep your fish. It's not like, you know, you want to have your fish and you never see them, right? You want to enjoy your fish. And with Playcoast, that's a little bit of a difficult situation and like one of the biggest questions everybody always asks is, how is my fish, uh, are so, how are my fish so active? Now, not all my playcos are this active and uh, I'm going to be honest with you. There are fish that are in my fish room that I don't get to see either. And I do the exact same things I'm doing with these guys and my high ancestors uh, Porto de Mas uh, fish. The exact same thing I'm doing uh, with those fish as well. But I never get to see those fish just because they're wild caught fish and uh, they're afraid of me. You know what I mean? It's just the reality of it. My L56 para ancestors are Anticus for example. I want to make videos about them. and. Uh, I, I never get to see them. I'm pretty sure you guys that have been following me for a long time know. And uh, with total honesty, like every time I try to film in that tank, you only see like shadows, right? So um, with my L401s, for example, I got them a few months ago, about four months ago, and they're still in their tank and I haven't made an update and you guys are probably wondering if I still have the fish and I still do. And I, I will make an update when I can uh, get the fish out of the tank at some point or when I catch them out. Uh, but at this point, up to now, I haven't really seen them active and doing anything, not even just for me to film, but for me to even look, okay? It's just the reality of those fish because they're not used to a person, a large body being in their environment. They think I'm a large fish trying to eat them and a fish my size could snack on a plate for this big, no problem. So they're definitely afraid of me. But that does not seem to apply to a lot of my uh, captive born animals, like uh, even uh, my F1, L471s. And uh, having the F1s in the tank definitely has made the parents a lot more active, so that's an exception for those guys. But in general, um, those fish that are in those tanks, like that are captive born, are a lot more active and a lot more uh, out outgoing when I'm in front of them. So I get to enjoy them quite a bit. So I believe that uh, captive born animals are better suited in that context if you want to enjoy your fish. There are other things as well. Uh, another thing I found was that it's so much easier to feed captive born animals. I mean, if you are buying fish from a breeder, you have the advantage of contacting the breeder and asking them exactly what they were feeding your fish. And then uh, feed the exact same things you can even like when people buy fish from me they'll ask me what are you feeding them and I tell them exactly what I'm feeding them and exactly what store in Canada I get my food from and uh, I also give them small packets of food to last them about a few weeks so that their fish is not going to go hungry so the fish is going to go into a tank or a breeder box or whatever situation he has going I'm not selling fish that need to go into breeder boxes I, f I sell larger fish I sell my fish at one and a half inches usually um, for most of my hype ancestors at least so um, in that context, they, they, the fish are more ready for life in their tank and they're more suited, they're more equipped to deal with the fish and its needs right away, right? As opposed to a wild fish would not readily accept a lot of the tank commercial food in the beginning. So you might have those difficulties as well. We really, uh, this really drove home to me recently when I purchased these uh, five zebra plecos. Me and my friend uh, Herrera went and picked up 10 fish well, he went and picked up the 10 fish and we split the group halfway. He took five and I took five. 
and uh, I got the five fish dropped off to my house, you know, because he was driving to pick them up. So thank you so much for doing that. And uh, so I put the fish in the tank, and then we were on FaceTime, or we were on the phone call, actually we were on a phone call, and talking about it. And he said, um, you know, the fish are eating really well. I said, mine too. Like, you know, they're chunky. They're actually right there. There's one. I'm actually counting them. They're looking at me. There's one, two, three, four, five. And they're not afraid of me because they've seen a human in front of their tank, in front of their breeder box, their whole life since the time they were this big, since the time they were little eggs. They probably saw the flashlight. They saw the person, you know, there, and then they were taken out of the cave. The person had them in a breeder box, one of these things, uh, hang on the back breeders, hang on the side or whatever. And uh, the fish saw the, this guy every day, you know, and now they're seeing me. It's the same thing. They're not afraid of me because they're seeing a, the same entity that was feeding them, okay? That's a big plus because now this animal is so used to seeing you, it's happy somewhat to see you every day. You know, when you go near the tank, it comes and greets you. My big male in here, he knows me so well that when he had the eggs in here, he came out when, I, when he saw me. Like, I was staying away from the tank because I knew he was going to come out as soon as he sees me. He's a pig, okay? He's legit a pig. And if he see, like, he'll have a girl trapped in the cave and he'll see me walking by here and he'll come out looking for food. He'll, he'll come out and he'll be like, are you going to feed me? Dad, are you going to feed me? That's not a wild fish. There's no way a wild fish is going to be that tame. You know, this guy fully knows who I am and he knows that I mean food. Like when he sees me, that food time and the lights come on, they're always out. All these guys are out. As soon as like, these lights come on, they're out. Because they know food is coming because they've been programmed to that life their whole life. So I get to see my fish and enjoy my fish. I mean, so that's a huge plus for me, uh, especially with these guys, because um, I really love them, you know? I really like them, I really like seeing them, and same with my Porto de Mas, that's probably like one of my most favorite fish. Actually, subscribe and hit that notification because my top five Playco video is gonna come out of all the fish that I have in my fish room. So uh, there's new fish coming, that there's at least 15 different types of Playcos. Actually, there is 15 different species of Playcos in my fish room, all breeding groups that are mostly, most of them are already breeding and some are just getting ready to start to breed. So I, I, I have my top five and I'll, I'll show, I'll put that video out when it's already filmed and everything. So stay tuned for that. But anyways, I like these fish, you know, I like to see them. Even my L401s, I like to see them, but I never do because they never come out. I mean, you guys might be wondering why I haven't made an update video on my L401s, which are spectacular looking fish. The only time I saw them was when they were in their quarantine tank and, and uh, they had nowhere to run except there was like a few caves and a slate. So they all had to sit on top of the slate or, you know, one of them would be in the cave, but the rest can't be in that same cave. So they're always running around, you know. But once I moved them to their tank, uh, I'm doing the exact same thing I'm doing in here. Actually, they have the, the same dither fish, like these uh, guppies, but they, there's a lot more in there. And there's also a group of uh, L134s in there, but that they're not coming out. At least not when I'm there, not for me to see them, not for me to film them, nothing. I have to go in there every night and look with the torch to make sure all six of them are, seven of them are there. You know, I have one in the tank back there, which got uh, damaged with, uh, from a breeding accident. And uh, the other six are in the tank behind me. And uh, all seven of them are in their caves, female included, and uh, does not come out to do anything except, I don't know when they come out to eat. I put extra food at night for them. And uh, same with the para ancestors Auranticus. I'm finding myself feeding them at like two o'clock in the morning sometimes because they're never out when the lights are on. They're always hiding. And you guys know this, uh, If you, they're one of my probably most rarest fish and they're spectacular. They're already morphing into yellows and stuff. I can see some of them having little spots and stuff, but I can never film them because they're always hiding. I never see them uh, except little shadows. And if the, the people that have been subscribed to my channel for a long time and that's been following me for a long time that probably were expecting me to make videos of the para ancestors or Anticus for the longest time probably know this because every time I make videos even of the tank you never see them. And I'm doing the same thing. They have a giant pair of angel fish, they have dither fish, they have other playcos in there like uh, super reds and stuff like that. Doesn't matter. They don't come outside. Okay, uh, the same thing with the L340 adults. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure even when the, all the fry were in the tank, they were a little bit more active. And I had like 15 or 16 uh, L134s with them growing out. So there was like about 30 small Playcos plus maybe another 50 uh, grow out little guys, you know, and uh, then the parents were a little bit out. And uh, But now there's no fry, there's no dither fish. 
they're not coming out. There is some uh, tetras and stuff, but it's not enough for them to feel comfortable. So I don't see those guys as much either. So that's the thing with captive uh, born animals versus uh, wild caught animals. And another thing I've actually noticed, which we will look at in upcoming videos in more detail, is that my captive born males and females, females really don't have to do much work except breed. But with the males particularly, I'm noticing that the captive born males are a lot more gentler on the eggs and stuff. They don't spook as easily. Um, I actually can pull out my caves out of these tanks, like my sub tank. I can pull out caves. There's a cave in here. I pulled out the entire cave with the male inside and uh, had him in there for about two and a half days until he hatched them. And then he, had, he was in there for another day and a half. And I actually stayed away from this tank because he is a legit pig. When he sees me, he comes out. He comes out looking for food. So I really didn't want him to come out uh, when the eggs were still not hatched and uh, I also didn't want him to break any eggs but I still went in there with the flashlight and I filmed them and you know people were messaging me saying you, your fish is going to break the eggs and he didn't even eat them, he didn't break them, there's 10 healthy fry in there, praise God and uh, I'm not too worried about him because he's not crazy with me, you know, he's not afraid of me. When I look in there, he's, he knows who I am and he knows there's nothing I can do, you know, I don't put my hands or fingers, he's never had that happen to him. He's, you know, he's been here for a couple of years now and uh, he's been seeing a person his whole life just like me, you know, just like these guys. So he, they're not afraid of people, you know, so he didn't panic, he doesn't panic. You know, so if you have a fish room where you never go into and you have towels over your tanks and stuff, I don't think this would be an issue. But with a situation like mine where I like to see my fish and uh, these tanks are actually in my living room, which is now converted into the fish room, which we will start calling the fish gallery, uh, the fish are usually gonna see me several times, probably right now because I'm home, probably 20 times a day. I'm in here pretty much eight, nine hours. So they're seeing me, you know, constantly. So if they're not used to the fact, then it's kind of pointless, you know? So just wanna add that in there and uh, also say that zebra placos are highly endangered. So with, when it comes to zebra placos, it's probably a better idea to buy a captive fish in terms of ethical reasons as well but also for your enjoyment because you're going to get a better experience with your fish. Uh, they're going to be more better adapted to captive life and also they're going to be more easier for you to feed and take care of because you're going to know exactly what type of food they're fed in most cases if you are buying from somebody local. Uh, they're going to be more adapted to your water and they're also going to be more adapted to you poking around and looking in there with a flashlight when they do actually eventually spawn for you so that they're not going to be terrified and break the eggs or eat the eggs or anything like that or kick them out or some other you know mishap that could happen and could go wrong so we'll look at a lot of this stuff in upcoming videos i have a lot of videos planned for you guys a lot of videos with dr thomas he has been giving me a lot of uh, ideas uh, for videos and stuff uh, our main goal now is basically with me as well as with him i think he told me this himself he's wanted to helping every person that has uh, these types of fish get them to spawn so like if you have these animals, my goal is to be there to help you to get them to maturity and to get them to spawn. So like we'll be looking at an entire video series of this topic, okay? So 2021, you're gonna get a lot of valuable content. So subscribe, hit that notification and stay tuned because a lot of cool stuff is coming your way. As always, thank you so much for your love and support. Hope you all have a happy and joyous 2021. I'll see you on the next video. God bless you all.